<laughs> let's uh, let's bring on Lisa Moldelski, the head coach of Lowville <laughs> Girls Basketball. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. What a win on Saturday! I know you can talk to us about it a lot more than we could recap it. I mean, ta- I mean, double overtime. What can you say about your girls and what it took to win this game? Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for having me on again. It always means a lot to that you guys cover. Um, you know, the, the sports in the area, especially our, our team. So I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I can't even put it into words. I'm still sort of basking in the in the sunlight and the in the glow of everything that happened. Um, you know, our girls, I walked into practice the day before and I was a little late getting there and our girls were in a huddle and they were all talking to one of my assistants and they were talking about, so where are we, where, where do we go for districts? Where do we play regionals? And I said, Hey girls, we got to, you know, we got to get through these next couple games. We get, Oh, we're winning those. So in their mind, they had a mentality that they wanted to win and that nothing was going to stop them and stand in their way. And I can't say enough about their grit and determination In years past when we would get down in a game, um, you know, it was always difficult for our girls to come out and find a way to win, but we did just that. Um, we played a very, talented and young Badger team um, that w- battled back and forth with us the entire game. And um, I'm just happy for the girls. Able to knock down eight three pointers in this game too, to help out with 24 points. And I mean, you guys are a, a, sh- a team that, that lives and dies by the three ball. And you guys certainly live by it too, with those eight. Just talk to me about the confidence of the girls still being able to take these shots from distance, especially here in the tournament now. You know, they applied a lot of pressure on us early. Um, I believe they came out in a man, um, and, and we did pretty well with that. Um, and, and then they shifted a little bit to a zone, and we were trying to find, like, an inside-outside game. Um, luckily, that day, our shots were falling. Uh, you know, the Wednesday game prior to that against Matthews, not so much. Um, but I know, you know, we have the weapons to, to get some shots up and, and make them. It's, it's, it's always been our – our vice, we, we, you know, it's, we're either consistent or we're not. Um, but you know, that day we were able to knock down, like you said, eight threes and that, that kept us in the ball game. And eventually, you know, we put away some free throws at the end and took care of the ball when we needed to. And, you know, that was just the difference. You know, you guys have been kind of under the radar this year. I mean, I know some of the games that you've played, haven't gone the way that you wanted to, but there are a lot of, there are wins that you've racked up this year that have gotten you into this mid range seat where you got, a home game in the tournament, and then you got a, a favorable matchup here in the second round and with the eight-seeded Badger. I mean, talk about this season as a whole and how you felt it has gone and how you have kind of felt this sense of you guys themselves being under the radar a little bit and maybe not respected as much as you should. Um, you know what? I, I, I sort of like being there. I think the girls do too. It, it takes the pressure off them. Um, you know, we won five out of our last six games, and our only loss was to a really, really talented um, Division Three Roots Town team um, just last Saturday. So they came in with the expectation, you know, it doesn't matter what seed we are, where we're at. Let's just play basketball um we competed i thought really well with some of the top teams you know in our league you know we battled waterloo we we, you know we lost one of our games to jackson by three or four we battled with west right before we went on that streak to mcdonald where we were away i think we lost you know our sixth person toward the end um like i said our league does a great job of preparing us you know so well for tournament time as you know i think there's six or seven of us from the scarlet mvac still in district play. And that says a lot about, you know, the players and the coaches that we see on a, on a daily, on a daily basis in our league. Yeah. I was going to actually just ask that and kind of just piggybacking off of that. How well do you think that the league play, the conference play, the 14 games that you kind of are guaranteed scheduled in that NBA Scarlet side, how much do you think that helps those younger girls develop and, and get them to the point where they're varsity ready? I, I mean, it helps tremendously. Like I said, you know, we're battling against Springfield every day and their size and their mismatches for us. And, you know, and teams like Jackson Milton with the kind of, you know, regardless of having six players, those those girls are tremendous. And Waterloo, look what they're doing, you know, and McDonald and Western Reserve, despite what they lost, you know, coming into the season, they're, they're such competitive teams. Um, it, 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 it just prepares us. I mean, we, we played some non-conference schedules where we got more of our wins in that respect, but 
even the, even some of the, our lower teams in our in our league in Middle Ridge, boy, they're young and they they push hard and they're aggressive. And Sebring, you always get a good matchup with with those girls. So I just feel it's just a great league to be in to prepare us. Um, our kids are growing just maturity wise and really starting to understand the game and what it takes to win. And, you know, we're always undermatched. I think, like I said, our, our tallest girl on our team's five, seven, um, but they play with such heart and grit. Um, and now they're really starting to believe in themselves and each other. And I think that's a huge thing going into tournament. Um, I, you know, I, like I told them girls, we're still dancing. You know, we, we've been, we've been looking for this and, you know, no one's seeing us coming and, and we're making some noise and that's all we can ask at this point. Yeah, and dance indeed in that locker room. I saw the locker room celebration that you posted uh, on social media. Talk about the elation of winning a sectional championship and watching those girls kind of celebrate that win meant for you as a coach and, and giving them that moment. You know, I, I, I was watching it the same night. I came home and I said, you know, I got to watch this game again because I felt like there was moments during that game where I almost blacked out. Like I couldn't believe what was happening. We were up at one point early in the third quarter by 16, it was 35, 19 after being, and I was thinking, Oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're going to win this game. And then, um, you know, pro sick went out with her third foul and we had a sitter as long, longer than we wanted to, or then we throw her back in the game and like a minute left in the third quarter, she picks up her fourth. So she plays the whole fourth quarter um, in the two overtimes before fouls. Um, we had Sammy Moore, one of our other leading scorers go out in the, at the end of the first um, overtime period. Um, but just seeing these girls fight through it and, you know, come up victorious at the end of the game. I mean, it was, it was complete chaos. We had a wonderful, you know, student section that made the trip out, you know, they rushed the floor and it, it was just, it was chaotic. You know, I just, I just don't think the girls understand the capacity of what they did um, and the kind of team that we beat. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm so happy to coach them. I'm so blessed to coach them. I'm so happy for them and finally seeing it all pay off. Um, and just, you know, come out on top is a wonderful thing. We don't always get to say that. So this is the time I see, you know, our season didn't show it, but you know, well, now we're starting to prove something to people, you know, that we can compete. Bright lights are not something this Lady Rockets team have been shy on. They've won two tournament games. They also won in Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse up in Cleveland this season. Coach Madowski, just talk to me a little bit. And you you mentioned the girls already having that supreme confidence before Badger. What is it like to coach a team that has that kind of confidence and is already really so bought into a program? Uh, talk about how easier it is to kind of coach that. It's so much easier. That was half the battle, you know, coming in, you know, a lot of these girls that are playing now, actually, I think all of them, all of our starters at one point started as freshmen. So, you know, it, it was a battle, just that maturity piece and, and teaching them, you know, guys, just play basketball. You know, you even when I call a set, you know, if it doesn't work, we don't have to run it. You just got to get in the flow of the game and, and be confident in your skills and what you're doing. And really, you know, Wednesday or Saturday was one of the first games that I really saw these girls believe in that and really, you know, work our game plan to, to almost perfection. I mean, we had a couple setbacks in, like I said, that third and fourth quarter where we just didn't do some things that maybe we play, we planned or what we wanted, but you know, that's youth and that's just the, the energy of the, you know, what was going on in the gym and, and the ups and downs of that game. But they're really, you know, they're really just coming together. Um, like I said, they, they want to win. I mean, that was a hard thing for these girls to understand. Like we used to be afraid, you know, obviously to play Springfields and, and Western Reserve and McDonald with the kinds of kids that they had in the past. And these girls are starting to realize even with, even with, but those teams still have, you know, we, we're not settling for anything less than competition and winning. And, and that's half the battle. Um, and I think now that they're starting to get it, it's a really fun thing to watch. When you look at uh, now you have another task in front of you, how do you kind of refocus yourselves and come off that big win and not be a little bit too jazzed up and, and kind of refocus into the, your next challenge? And one of our favorite coaches, Mark, Mike Bailey, came in and he used the phrase stay even. How do you guys stay even uh, to, to go and face the next challenge on your slate? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, yesterday we took a day off. We went out to watch, um, you know, why shoot lady – Lady Penguins play. It was a nice day just to relax and enjoy each other's company and sort of celebrate the win. And I told him we got to get back to the grind, ladies. Now it's now it's work time. We're going in in a little bit to watch film and 
um, get a nice practice in and, and tomorrow we'll do some team meal and some bonding stuff and some shooting just to get us ready. But to be honest, the kids are in a really good place. I, I really don't see this group as being that team that's just overzealous and, you know, they're in a good place. They, 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 they're confident. I think they really, if you, if you sort of watched our game against Matthews or you knew anything that was going on in that game, that game was a little bit more challenging for us. We played them before. So there was high expectations on us to, to win again, um, that they placed on themselves. And we came out and shot very poorly that game, um, and still came out victorious. So, you know, Saturday was a different, was a different beast. These girls came in with, I told them, no one's expecting us to win, but, but you guys, you know what I mean? In your heart of heart, that's it. If you guys can play within that mindset, take care of the ball and do what we need to do. You know, the game's going to, the game's going to come to us and we're going to, you know, be in the game. Um, so I think being the underdog coming in um, fits well for these girls. They play better. They play more relaxed. There's no expectations. They do, they're just going to go out and give us everything they have. Coach, I'm sure you've seen the Bristol tape and you've watched film on this team that you're going to play. They're the top seed. They're having kind of a program defining year that they've, this program has never been where they are before. I think it's the best record they've ever had at Bristol girls basketball. Usually it's their boys team really that's running the show, but this girls team has, has really had a great season. What kind of challenges do you see them facing? Uh, and what are you guys going to have to do to win on Wednesday? Um, you know what? Obviously, they have a wonderful player in um, Zerzo. Or Zerzo. Um, she she provides a lot of height um, issues for us, like any other team that we've played. Um, I, I think, you know, with the speed we have, we have to take advantage, hopefully, of the tempo of the game, um, limit her touches as much as we possibly can, make her uncomfortable in the paint when she does touch. Um, sort of our game plan, what we had coming into Badger. Uh, I can't compare the two the two girls, you know, not really seeing her in person and and knowing. But you know, the Grexa girl is a great player. She's only a sophomore. I thought we did a great job of making her uncomfortable in the paint. She only had three first half um, points on us. That was our game plan: try to make them shoot from outside. Unfortunately, in the third and fourth quarter, they took advantage of that and hit a couple shots and and kept the game close and even went in the league at one point. But um, you know, Badgers senior loaded, they have a ton of experience. They have height, they have speed, they have length, they have a little bit of everything. What makes them a great team? I mean, it's we're we're up for the challenge. Like I said, we're going to go in in a little bit and watch some film. Um, let the girls see a little bit of some of their tendencies of what they do well and what maybe we could, you know, break a little bit on them and see what we could, um, see what we can do. I, I, my biggest thing at this point, when we played Rootstown that last Saturday, um, right before tournament play, I mean, they were, they're mammoth. They're huge. I mean, they have a bunch of girls that are probably six foot, if, if not high five eleven. And our girls looked at them and said, wow, coach, they're like women. We look like little girls. And I said, guys, no expectations, just compete. So that's, that's what our focus is right now. Let's no expectations. Let's compete and see what happens. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just excited for these girls to have that opportunity to play in front of a district crowd. Coach, my final question for you. Before the season, we talked with a lot of our area coaches, and we always ask, or we always say that no two teams are the same. And a coach knows that going into each year. Now, with a full season, regular season, two tournament games under your belt, uh, what about this particular 21 22 Lowville Lady Rockets team is so unique? Um, I think what what we've, I think just our growth, our maturity, our understanding of the game has improved immensely. Um, the girls' attitudes, you know, I, I told them, you know, eventually it, it was hard with our program. We just didn't have a lot of winning seasons when I came in. And even leading up to this point, this is our first, I think, 11 win season since I've been there. Um, so th they're excited about the winning. They're excited, you know, what it brings. It brings excitement um, to their friends, their family, their, you know, their classmates. And um, they're they're just ecstatic. You know, I mean, they're 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 feeding off that win. Like I said, you have to we have to keep even like you said. Anthony and just try to focus, but I really just love what our girls are believing in. And that's themselves. Um, I always told them girls, you know, I can't, I can't want it and I can't want it more than you. And I can't go out and shoot the ball for you. And that's the biggest thing. We've always struggled with the offensive side of the game. It was usually never really our defense. That was a huge, huge impact in wins or losses in the offense was, but I mean, all of my girls right now, even the ones coming off the bench, they're confident in what they're doing on the offensive side and with the scoring. So that's just got to continue to grow. 
Um, and I think we'll be, I think we'll be, you know, a force to be reckoned with in the next couple of years. Coach, congratulations so much on the win. We definitely thank you for your time as well today to talk to you. Uh, good luck on, on Wednesday. We know we'll be there on YSN. It'll have you covered and we can't wait to see the Rockets pull off another, another victory and get into a district championship. We're hoping that's our, that's our, that's our hope here, guys. I appreciate you guys covering us and um, giving us a little bit of ink and these girls are definitely deserving of that. So thank you. We love it, coach. Look forward to talking to you again real soon. Hopefully.